Hello, my friends. It's DIYs by Dar. Let's repurpose it. An old standing lamp. Here it is. I've had it for two years out in my barn. Very ugly. Very dirty. Veneer on the top and the bottom. I need to... Oh, and yes, very wobbly. That had uh, some issues going on the bottom we needed to take care of. So my plan is... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the hardware, everything here up at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and I am going to vacuum it real well. And I am going to clean it with some TSP to see if I can get all the grub off. So let's get to it. I started looking at the socket and the fan holder, um, the device that holds the fan to put the shade on, and it was really bad. And I didn't like the cord, and I knew if I cut it, cut, that I would have to be an electrician at this point, and I was going to have to rewire this with new cord, which was fine. Here was the spot that the veneer was lifting, and I needed to get some glue underneath there. I believe it was some type of cleaner maybe they were using to clean it with because it was not mold. It did not smell like mold. It was just like a weird spot that looks like it may have been punky at one point there in the corner. So the best I could do is try to get as much glue underneath that little flap. And there was even a little bit more sticking up to the right of that there. Just a little tab almost. Um and get them uh, pushed back down and get enough glue back in inside there and put enough pressure on there maybe I could make it a little bit more of a solid piece again. What I did was put a piece of metal over it and then use some vice grips and I had to actually torque the vice grips up just a little bit to keep some direct pressure on that area to hold it down. Here was the bottom's problem. It had four little um, buttons on the bottom so basically it spun around like a top. It needed eight of them at the bottom. I was going to go ahead and fill the holes and then um, use some bin primer with uh, some of my zebra brushes. I went ahead and sanded it uh, first, just to scuff it up a bit. And I used a rad pad um, just because it goes around those spools so nice. Um, it makes the sanding a lot easier. Uh, the round brush that I used from Zebra Brush is a cylinder brush, and it is for spools, and they work awesome. They go right around, and it does make painting a lot easier. I went ahead and just used my uh, flat brush, two inch brush, uh, for the rest of the portions and I ended up doing two coats of primer. And there's that one spot there you can see I put a little bit of uh, wood filler there. I was actually thinking I wanted to try to ceruse this, but the veneer was so thin and I started going and I thought, oh no, I better not, this is not going to... This is not going to work. So I got rid of that idea and I went ahead and got some Dixie Bell paint and my favorite color, Gravel Road, which is a nice charcoal color. And I went ahead and used my same br zebra brushes, the cylinder, the round one for the spooling, which worked great. And then the two inch 
flat one there for the rest of the piece. I was worried about the coverage because I didn't tint uh, anything and it actually did cover well with two coats. But as you can see, I'm putting the paint on here and it's like squeak, 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 where's the paint? And I, I try not to, you know, get too much up in there. They, they say rule of thumb is don't stick your brush in more than a, a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So it's not going all the way up your bris bristles. And I was having a hard time um, getting this piece wet. In fact, on the second coat, I did have to use my um, spritz, spritz bottle with water in it. And then I remembered um, I had swam and I put on the dehumidifier because this is right next to where my small exercise pool is at. And it probably was at about 47% humidity. So it was pulling all the, the moisture out of the air. So my paint was not going on very good. And it gave me lots of problems when I went to put my finish coat on. Because I just put some regular polycrylic on it after I put two coats of the paint on. And I had a bit of a problem. You're going to see it here in a moment. Uh-oh, all the brush strokes. I had to sand it, sanded it down good, and I didn't want to make a spray booth, but I made a mini spray booth in my basement, and I had to give this a quick little spritz after I sanded it to see if I could spare what was left on the top of this table. Ah, a lot better, a lot better. There we go. Just didn't want to break out that sprayer for such a small little job like that. Now is the fun time. I got all the wood in here and I'm getting ready to put some of these wood pieces on there. And take a red marker. Look at your piece and see where it hits on the portion of your lamp where it's touching. Just make a little dot. And then you know where you're gonna to have to put your hot glue. I am gonna use a hot glue, a hot glue gun, because that's gonna stabilize it in place rather quickly for yourself. And then if you want to use some other glue, like some E6000, um, you can. Um, I use a little bit of E6000 more on the bottom base, the bigger pieces, but otherwise I rely just on the hot glue gun. That stuff sticks pretty darn good. Once you get it on, um, things are difficult to come back off. So here goes the first piece. Now, when you walk up to this, you think, wow, she's got all them stuck on there. And actually, I don't. It's almost like a game of playing puzzle. Find the pieces that fit together the best, almost that they can sit there by themselves and they don't even have any glue on them. Then you know that they're going to go together good. The, 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 the idea is, though, when you put them down, make sure you put them in the right order so you know where to put them back. And, I mean, they're not exactly going to go back, but in the same way but pretty much in the same area I don't always mark it uh, with a red pen sometimes I do just kind of eyeball it if I know the piece has got enough um, exposed that it's going to stick really well without knowing uh, a more precise spot to put that hot glue Here I'm showing a close-up where I want this board to go and you can see it pretty much snugs right up. So I'm just making a little mark right there in the middle where it is basically touching the best. Load it up with some glue and then that is where I'm going to stick it.
Now I've gone all the way around, so I'm just going to give it one little last little squeeze here. And I can feel that it's very, very nice and solid. And it is very cohesive together as a group. Nice and solid, the way that they lay together and next to each other. You kind of want one to support the other. Now here's a funky piece. So I have to be a little more uh, particular about where I want the glue on this one. So I made three marks. And on pieces like this, kind of start at one end and work your way down with the hot glue. And keep in mind what direction you're going. Have it ready to put back because if you get kind of turned around and you turn it and then and you, and you grab it, you end up grabbing that hot glue. That stuff hurts. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. You get that on your skin, it can, it can burn your skin pretty good. So be careful. Get the glue on there. Carefully get ready to put it back in place. Take your time and then gently snug it to that spot where it felt good and it wasn't moving. And there, there it is. If the glue sticks out because you put too much on, like makes a little um, ball bulb and starts pushing up and you can see it between the um, wood, just take a popsicle stick while it's still workable and push it back down and then you won't see it. Sometimes on the bottom uh, bases, if I feel like a piece does need more than some hot glue, and I know I, I really need a, real, a professional hot glue gun, but that's the one I got for now. Um, you can take some E6000 and just go back and put it in between some areas where you think that maybe you might need a little extra glue, and that's what I'm doing here just putting it on a popsicle stick and then pushing it right in between either right above the area or right below the area where that hot glue is at, wherever you can get it in. And of course, always trying to hide um, so you don't see that glue the best way you can. Sometimes I'll hide it with the rock. Now, I did this a little bit backwards um, because it's uh, winter time here and I have my mother-in-law I watch now and I put the top on before I changed the cord out because my husband didn't bring the cording stuff until the next day. So here I am. I got one cord tied on to the other cord. So I'm pulling um, the old cord through, hoping the string will follow and thus pull the new cord through. I'm not sure if this is really the way that you do this, but this was the way that I did it. And I'm getting up to where the new cord is going to start to be fed through. And once I got it going, um, I just wanted to see what would have happened if I would have just fed it. Would I have gotten stuck? Would it go all the way on its own? Nope. I got stuck. I had to pull it. It was stuck. And when you see how hard this jerks there, I there was a little force in there. So I'm glad I did what I did or I would not have gotten it through. Um, there's directions on the cord and on the socket on which way you need to wire this. And on all cording, um, there's one of them that has a, a ribbed area kind of like going all the way around it. And this has to do with the polarity on where you hook them up on the top of your new socket. But follow the directions on the one you get and it will um, tell you for sure. And also um, save the old one so you can kind of look at it and reverse engineer it if you have to. Um, 
So I went ahead and I got the cords uh, hooked up on top of the new socket, got it inside its um, paper or car heavy cardboard container before I put it back inside its liner. So all I have to do now is get the knob end and a light bulb because before I go any further and I pull this down and I lock this socket in place, I want to make sure that this works. So let's try it. Ta-da! Woohoo! 